Welcome back, Grade 12s. Yes, you're on Learn Extra, your favorite learning program. The program that's going to make a difference to your accounting results. That's right. So, in order to make that difference, you need to reach out and dial 0861-058-262. Why is that? Because we're busy working through the February 2010 supplementary accounting paper. We want it to be as interactive as possible. Come up with your questions. Come up with your queries. What's troubling you? What are you uncertain about? What is it that you need more clarity on? Give us a shout or drop us an email on info at learnextra.coza. Remember, if you send us an email, leave information, a contact number, so that we can contact you and get more information from you. Okay, now, the next question is based on a projected income statement. That's right, which falls under the, 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 the topic. Remember, it falls under the learning outcome of cash budgets. We're looking specifically at question six that deals with a projected income statement. Let's look at the question. It says here, you are provided with the projected income statement and additional information relating to Helen's hairstylist for the period April to June 2010. The business is owned by Helen Davids. Helen has also prepared a cash budget for the same, for the same time period. The financial year end is the 31st of March. Okay, answer the questions which follow. So there you have a projected income statement that's given to you, okay? a completed projected income statement, you are also given additional information. The line of business, Helen gave up her job to start this business in 2004. She invested her life savings of 800,000 in this business. The business styles hair for its customers. They also sell hair products to the public. Employees, Helen employs three hairstylists. She has planned to expand the business by employing a fourth stylist from the 1st of June 2010. She also employs a cleaner. Business premises is rented. Okay, what are we paying? We currently, she currently rents 60 square meters. Okay, that's the size of the premises, but this will increase the floor space as of May due to expansion. She has a fixed deposit of 468,000 for 12 months, which will mature on the 30th of, August, 30th of April, sorry, 2010. Right, okay, then there's information there regarding the fixed asset that which we will allude to as we come into the question. Let's look at the questions. Refer to the projected income statement to identify or calculate the following. Number one, the monthly salary paid to each hair stylist. Okay, let's go back. And here we can see that what do we want? We want to work out the salary of the hairstylist. Remember, at this point here, at this point here, she was employing three hairstylists, isn't it? Because that's the information that we read earlier on. Here goes. Let's re recap here. Helen employs three hairstylists. She's planned to expand the business by employing a fourth from the 1st of June. Now, if you look at the information here, that's April's information. And based on April's information, she's employing three hair stylists. Got that? Okay, so what do we do? We take the 25,500, which is given to us in our question, and we divide it by three to give us 8,500. 25,500, which is what? This one here. The total paid to our, the salary of the hairstylist, 25,500, okay? Divided by three, because we know we've employed three hairstylists, or she has employed three hairstylists, which will then be equal to 8,500. There's my 8,500. Or, if you had worked, just to give you a further explanation, if you had worked with the June figure, 34,000, then what would you do? If you worked with the June figure, then based on the question, 
you know that from the 1st of June, she was going to employ a fourth hairstylist. So therefore, you would do this year. You take the 34,000 and divide it by four. Please, important. You can't because you know the fourth person has been employed and therefore you would get the same answer of 8,500. Okay, easy two marks, isn't it? Great stuff. We're going to total this question, aren't we? Right, let's look at the next one. The percentage increase in wages that the cleaner will receive during the projected period. The percentage increase. Once again, into my question. Here goes. What am I looking at? I'm looking at the wages of my cleaner, which is 3,400. Then it moves to, that was for April. Then it, may, it moves to 3,672. Do you see that? Okay. What does the question tell us? It says we must calculate the percentage increase. Okay. Not difficult. Watch what we do. Don't fear when Ashraf is near. 3,672. New wage, am I right? Correct. That's a new wage, correct? Okay. There's it. You can clearly see it, can't you? Minus, what was the old wage? The old wage rest on the fixed deposit. Let's find it. Here it is. There's my interest income. I'm receiving a value of 3315 per month. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do you say, fine, take the 3315 and multiply it by 12, which will give me an answer of 39,780. Okay, now, if I take this year and I say, fine, the total interest for the year is 39,780 over... Let's go into this year. We can do our cal we can do our calculation. Okay. Uh, let's do the calculation here. Thirty-nine thousand seven hundred and eighty. Right. Over. What was the value of my fixed deposit? I'm told that the value of my fixed deposit was. Let's look at the question so we can get the information. 468,000, therefore, over 468,000. Okay, and what do I do with this? I multiply it by 100 over 1. Calculation, 39,780 times 100 divided by the value of my fixed deposit was 468,000. So 468,000 and therefore I'm going to get an answer of 8,5%. The interest rate on this particular one is 8.5%. So that's the interest that I'm earning on my fixed deposit. Let's look at the next question. It said there, the rental per square meter and the number of additional square meters you will rent from the 1st of May. Okay, let's take the first part of the question. Let's look at the rental per square meter. Very simple. You take your 24,600, which is what? Your rental. Where is your rental figure? Let's get to our rent figure, 24,600, okay? And we take the 24,600, divide it by 60, because that's the value of the square meterage. That was the size of the shop. Remember that information was given to us. And when we calculate that, we take 24,600 
24,600 24, divided by 60, and that will tell us that the rental per square meter is 410 rand per square meter. In other words, it's costing us 410 rand per square meter to calc for, for our rental purposes. All right, so now what you do, don't go away because we're coming with the next part of the question because this question had two parts to it. We're now going to explain, when we come back, we'll explain the second part. So don't go too far away, take a mini break and we'll be back with you in a while.